Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Gundam News. And after a pretty slow news week last week, we've got some really exciting stuff this time around. Yesterday, Bamco announced that in 2022, they will be releasing a Gundam-themed first-person shooter. It's going to be called Gundam Evolution, and so far things are looking pretty good. Now the most important thing for all of us watching is that they did confirm that they're going to be releasing it in multiple regions, so to me that sounds like they're going to be releasing the game in English as well. Now, as for the gameplay, it's going to be 6 versus 6 team-based battles in which every mobile suit has its own unique abilities that they can use. So, it sounds like they're capitalizing on the popularity of hero shooters. Personally, I'm more of a fan of traditional first-person shooters, but, you know, because it's Gundam, I'll give it a shot. Now, what I was quite surprised by was the very interesting mascot lineup. Now, there are definitely some cool mobile suits in there, just a few that I wasn't quite expecting. So we have obvious ones like the RX-78 II, the Sazabi, and the Barbie. But then we've also got the Dome Trooper, the Ashimar, and the Gym Sniper II. Obviously, one that I'm really excited about, and it also makes it very easy for me to know which one I'm going to main. And then by looking at the trailer, we can also see some other mobile suits that will be available like the Gun Tank, the Pale Rider, the Vanilla Gym, the Methus, the Zaku 2, and the Turn A Gundam. Again, a few picks that are quite obvious, I mean the Zaku 2, but then also a few surprising ones to have in the initial lineup like the Gun Tank or the Methus, like mobile suits that aren't bad but just not something I would expect to be immediately in the game. But it's cool to see that they have a nice variety of popular mobile suits and a few more, well, wouldn't say obscure ones, but a few less popular ones. Then more details will be shown tomorrow or today, depending on the time zone you're watching this in, Saturday the 17th, 8 p.m. Japanese time when they will be streaming the game on YouTube and it will also have a link to the stream down below. And for those of us living in Japan, a Japan-exclusive open beta will be held on August the 8th and August the 9th, so on those days we'll probably get some more interesting news concerning the game. Now the only potential downside I can see so far is that the game is going to be free to play. Although with their previous announcement of wanting to focus more on the esports market, I'm not expecting the game to be pay to win, but it's always careful to be vigilant about it. So definitely stay tuned for more updates concerning this very interesting looking game. Like this segment about the computer specs you'll need to run the game that I only found after I recorded the main video. So the minimum requirements are an i5-3570, 8GB of RAM and a GTX 1050, Whereas the recommended specs are an i7-4790, 16GB of RAM and a GTX 1660 Ti. Which is quite a bit more hefty than the next game we'll be talking about, Super Robot Wars 30th. So, back to the main video. Now a game that I was unfortunately a bit less excited about was the Super Robot Wars 30th which got a pretty big update today. The most important one being a list of all of the series included. We've got Super Electromagnetic Robot Combat Lar V, Mobile Suit Gundam, Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam, Zeta Mobile Suit Variations, Mobile Suit Gundam Shars Counter-Attack, MMSV, followed by Mobile Suit Victory Gundam, Mobile Suit Gundam NT or Narrative, Heavy Metal Algaim, The Brave Police, J Decker, The King of Braves, Gao Gai Gar Final, The King of Kings, Gao Gai Gar vs. Betterman, Code Geass Lel Lelouch of the Rebellion 3 Glorification, Code Geass Lelouch of the Resurrection, Get a Robo Armageddon, Mazinger Z Infinity, Mazing Kaiser, Infinitism, Magic Knight Rayarth, Gun X Sword, Majestic Prince, Knights and Magic, and SSSS Gridman. And I know it's a subjective opinion here, but 
I'm not all that excited about series included. You know, for something that was that's really going big on we are the 30th anniversary, like we're celebrating the 30th anniversary of this series. It's got some iconic ones, but I guess I was just expecting a little bit more, you know, because they're really pushing that anniversary line. But like, again, it is a subjective thing. What is a bit less subjective is, remember when I said that the animations felt quite stiff? Well, most of you guys seem to agree with me and the Steam requirements definitely reflect this. The minimum specs are a Core 2 Duo E6750 with 4GB of RAM and a GT320. And if you thought that was already demanding enough, the recommended specs are a Core 2 Quad Q9400, 4GB of RAM again, and an NVIDIA GeForce 9800 GTX. And for the people who aren't exactly sure what those numbers mean, you can buy a computer that will blow the minimum specs out of the water for less money than it costs you to buy the ultimate digital edition of the game. As for the recommended specs, that would have been a mid to high range PC in 2008. So sufficient to say, if you're watching this video, you should probably be able to run this game no problem. And then talking about that price, on Steam you can pre-order the regular edition for $59.99, the digital deluxe edition which includes a season pass and bonus mission pack for $84.99, and the digital ultimate edition which is going to include all of the previous stuff and the premium sound and data pack for $104.99. This means we'll have to pay extra for the anime BGMs, won't we? Now, I'm gonna be brutally honest here, but $104.99 for, let's call it what it is, the full version of a game that would have looked okay in 2008 is quite a steep price to pay, and therefore I do find it a bit difficult to get too hyped about what we're seeing so far. Also, if you prefer PlayStation 4 or Switch, the game will also be available for those consoles, although there is no word on a Western release so far. Of course, as with many recent games like it, you can get the English Asian version. Now, frankly, the most excited I got while I was researching and writing this section was going to play Asia to check on that English version, and seeing that they will be releasing Fatal Frame Maiden of Black Water for the Switch in English. Moving right along, the third big announcement then was for the prototype of the Gundam Girls Generation Gigi and Lucia. Now the picture you see right here is just for a prototype that's under review, but judging by how it looks, I don't think they're going to be changing too much on that. So fans of Gigi look forward to more updates concerning this figure. And now for some Gunpla related news. In October, we're getting a new Gundam marker set themed after Gundam MSV and it will allow you to paint your Gunpla in more realistic colors. The set will set you back 1650 yen, around 15 US, and will include dark yellow, red brown, dark green, light blue, brown green, and dark gray. I'm definitely liking that dark reddish brown color that's in there. Then the fifth episode of Gundam Build Real was released, and alongside of it, pre-orders open for the real great RX-78-2 Team Bright Custom, and the real great high mobility type Zaku-2, Team Monstore with an O custom. Now I wonder how many stickers and leftover parts are going to be required to make the RX-78-2 the color that it is. It is 500 yen more expensive and if you look at the pictures it doesn't come with anything extra so that's telling me it's going to have quite a few leftover parts so you might be able to make a very interesting looking RX-78-2 if you mix and match the parts the way you want them to. Then the Zaku-2 is also 500 yen more expensive but at the very least that thing does come with a cool new head because just looking at the colors of that thing, I wouldn't expect there to be too many leftover parts just because of recoloring, but 
maybe it is more than I'm thinking. Now, as for the things that we could get this week then, on July 10th, the latest lineup of Gundam decals was released for 550 yen apiece or 5 US. And in the lineup, we've got Gundam H General Purpose 1, Hathaway's Flash General Purpose Number 1, The Origin General Purpose Number 4, Build Diver General Purpose Number 1, Real Great New Gundam, and Real Great Sazabi. And on the same day, the Gundam base also released some new stuff. A metallic version of the High Great Revive Sharzaku 2 for 1760 yen. The Unicorn Gundam Head Display Base Psycho Frame Color Variation Version and Unicorn Gundam Unit 2 Banshee Head Display Base Set for 1650 yen. And the Real Great New Gundam Heavy Weapon Set Clear Color Version. And since I've already covered those only a little while ago, there's nothing really I can add here. So quickly moving on to some other news that I also don't really have a lot of new comments to make about. The latest Gundam Girl by Mika Akitaka, which is the Gym Command Space Type. And I've said it quite a lot of times before, even though I do like the designs, his newer works do feel very cookie cutter. And the gym command here especially stood out to me. When you look at the legs, they're missing the thrusters, the arms feel more like redesigned Gelguk Jaeger arms, like with the beam spot guns that they seem to have inside of them, and the body also feels really generic. The only things on this design that really have that gym command feel are the shoulder pads, the earmuffs, the backpack, the breastplate, and of course the beam gun and the shield. And I gotta say, that redesign of the beam gun is really nice looking. But now on to this week's Gundam apparel. Bankure has us covered with some really nice Gundam seat Gundam t-shirts. For 3850 yen, we can get a black t-shirt featuring the Strike, the Aegis, the Duel, the Buster, the Blitz, the Freedom, or the Justice. But there is one weird thing that happened on the announcement page. When you look at the picture with all of the t-shirts, we see the Strike Gundam in the same style as the rest. But then on the individual pictures that they provided, we suddenly see the Strike Gundam with its armor Schneiders drawn. Then if we go to the actual store, it's again just the Strike Gundam in the similar style as all of the others. So now I wonder if that armor Schneider drawn Strike Gundam design is a rejected design or if it might be a future design. Only time will tell. Uh, whatever the case might be, pre-orders started on the 15th and they will be releasing in August. Then also from Bankure is this new lineup of acrylic logo displays. You can either get the big King of Hearts logo for 1650 yen, 15 US, the small King of Hearts logo for 1320 yen, 11 US, the entire Shuffle Alliance collection in big for 6380 yen, 60 US, or the entire Shuffle Alliance collection in small for 5720 yen, 55 US. Pre-orders started today and they will all be shipping out in September. What you can get right now then for Gundam Apparel is Strict G's Dry Setup. And this collection features camo t-shirts for 4,180 yen apiece, around $35. And they are available in Xeon Army Tiger Stripes, Earth Federation Navy Woodland, Vist Foundation Whitewood and Mafti Blackwood. And to go along with these t-shirts, you can also order some comfortable and easy to wear shorts for 3,850 yen apiece. Available in Xeon Army Green, Earth Federation Army Navy, Vist Foundation White and Mafti Black. And now believe me when I tell you that I kept the best for last. Remember when I talked about those Zagok fishing lures? Well, they're finally getting released. February next year and man do those promotional images look cursed. <laughs> A set of five of these two inch fishing bait Zagoks will set you back 990 yen, a little under 10 US, and you can get them in either Shars Custom Red, Mass Production Blue or Xeon Green. Of course, these are perfect to use with your Xeon fishing rod, which you of course already own. And if you don't, I'll have a link down below so you can fix that problem. 
I can't wait to see what the next totally crazy and vaguely related Gundam crossover piece of merch is going to be. But with that, we are ending this week's episode of Gundam News. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great day, and I'll see you all next week with more Gundam News.